Julia, what's up, Julia? How's it going? Stop throwing shade. Am I throwing shade? I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure what I did, but I apologize anyway. So, because I don't want to do that. Hey, go get this book if you haven't done so for my new diamonds. All right, the Forbidden Secrets of the Goody Box, which your father didn't tell you and your mother didn't know. It is free for you to download um, on my website, Great Relationship Resource, ChristopherReed.org. Okay, this is your relationship source. And um, my YouTube, not YouTube, but my Twitter and my Periscope handle, The Doc Reed. All right, so. Um, yeah, go there, get that. What's up? What's up? I, uh, you're well. Okay. Very good. All right. I know you are you keeping the CEO, you know, contained, you know, just in a little bitty box. I know she gets out a little, a little bit here and there, but you know, when it's, ah, you know, we just don't want to, you know, kill nobody. Finally got the book. Took a while. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad you got it. Hey, if you have problems getting that book, Email me, chris at christopherreed.org. Go to my website, whatever. You shouldn't have problems downloading, downloading it anymore. I, I've made some tweaks to my website, so hopefully it resolves the problem. If not, no worries. Just email me, okay? So let's jump into this topic. And a lot of people that probably wanted to hear it might not hear it because um, they were her. Oops, her feminist you. Uh, oh, is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I know what you mean by that. Um, we're going to talk about dating a narcissist. Now, this seems to be a very popular topic. I guess there are a lot of guys out there that seem to be narcissists. Okay, but I, I want to be very clear, ladies, about the whole narcissism thing. You know, narcissists, a lot of times this, this gets thrown around, but just, you're not really dealing with a true clinical narcissist. I mean, narcissism is a disorder. I mean, it's like selfishness. It's, it's, it's a something beyond that, you know, it's totally self-absorbed. It's all that. So you may be dealing with a guy who just don't want to share his M&Ms. OK, um, he just don't want to share uh, his his blankie. I don't know. But that, you know, that maybe that one little isolated thing might not qualify him as a narcissist. But if you're dating a narcissist, we're going to find out tonight because we got our checklist. OK, so. Now, well, let me say this also. Most time, the ones who are susceptible to doesn't want to share his time. Narcissists don't want to share nothing. Let's be very clear. We're going to get into it. So you, you, as I cook this thing, I'm going to cook it slow. Okay, maybe a little faster. Um, you'll understand. But now I, I have to say the, the doormat is more susceptible to the narcissist than any of the other type of women guarded CEO. First of all, the CEO, she's her thing is control, and I'm not about to put up with that too long. And the guarded woman, listen, I've been hurt, I'm guarded, and you know, I'm gonna smack you and I'm gone. So the that leaves us with the wonderful doormat diamond. Okay. And her thing is, hey, XOXO, almond joy, what's happening? Um, glad to see some of the faithful few out here. Um, so the doormat, her thing is, you know, we know she likes to please. We know she's a giver. Okay. They are predators. Uh, yeah. And I know y'all got some great narcissist stories. So she likes to please. She likes to give. All right. So sometimes that giving, well, a lot of times that giving gets taken advantage of and she feels like, well, I'm a team player. I'm in. I'm in. So it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect setup for a narcissist. This is, this is a hand in glove relationship. Okay. So I just want to make sure I put that out there. So if this is you, no shame. Let me say something. This is some place where we can all come because last couple of weeks we've had some other topics put out here that have kind of been lightweight, mind blowing. OK, but good. Good. I like it. I love it. I love Sacristado. What's up, Mac Neal? When you hit me up, I was at my daughter's. Uh, I was at KK's parent teacher conference. Dieta Johnson. What's up? What's up? What's up? So I'm going to hit you back in a little bit, homie. But hang out. You know, you have great perspectives. Um, I should tell them who you are. Um, but I won't do that. So anyway, unless you want me to, um, it's, it's not a big secret, but you know, anyway, um, he's awful. <laughs> so moving right along. First thing, ladies, get your paper out. Uh, he doc didn't know you were on. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. You know, tell your people, share it, invite it. It's going down now. We here. All right. Listen, narcissists, ladies, 
they are, they have an inflated sense of importance. Okay. They're very, very arrogant. First time for me. Sounds interesting. Well, come on. Yeah. Have a seat. Pull up a chair. We can get into it. Lady Broncho three. Yeah. We all in the building, all in the building. That's that, let's go. Let's get it. So yes, they have an inflated sense of importance. So what does that mean? That means that they're the, the ego is, is, it's, it's, it's like the building's not big enough. Okay. Extremely arrogant. So first of all, they like to be recognized, not just for things they've done. They want to be recognized when they ain't done nothing. Okay. So ladies, if you have a guy who's done absolutely nothing, you ain't paying for nothing. You know, you ain't putting nothing on nothing necessarily, but at the same time, you want to get all this recognition and then you mad. OK, you mad when I don't give it to you. OK, ladies, that is a trait of a narcissist. Or if they have done something, let's hey, benefit of the doubt. Say he did something eight years ago. Remember, I took the car down and my guy, I had to look at it. You, you remember that? So you want to act like it never happened, sir. That was 10 years ago. I mean, seriously, it, it's, it's like so he's still trying to get payment. All right, mm. on an unhealthy preoccupation. Would you say Uh He's still trying to get payment, but you see, it's all about him and his inflated sense of ego. It doesn't matter whether he did something today or he did something yesterday or he never did it. It's all about who he thinks he is. So, I mean, the end game, if you're dating is marriage. All right. You are not just dating. Well, you know, some not just dating for grins and giggles. So can you imagine being with a guy? That say, for example, and this this may be the cardinal sin. What if you get more attention than he does? Oh, my God. If you were a narcissist and say it's just something about your personality that people are drawn to you and he don't get that shine, it's going to be a problem. OK, now we got to start the pouting. OK, we got to do whatever we got to do to let you know we got to penalize you for taking my thunder. It's a situation. He is not going to be. No, he's not going to be happy. But let me tell you, let me because I'm I got to give you the flip side of it so that y'all know what the real thing looks like. Or you can't tell me anything good that I do. Right, 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 right. All of that. So a real guy, a guy who's not the narcissist, the guy that's the husband, the cowboy that I talk about that you really want to be with. You know, what I'm saying he doesn't mind letting you shine. OK, he doesn't always need the attention. That's that's not his thing. He understands that. Where, where my diamond at? He understands that this is what you are. Okay. I I mean, what is he the diamond? Is that what we're doing now? It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Okay. So no, a real guy, you don't, you don't have to worry about that ladies. Okay. Let's keep it moving. All right. If he is preoccupied with perfection. Oh, I'm talking tonight. I know I am. So listen, all his gear, his car, where he works, yeah, run, Mac, run. Where he works, um, everything, it's got to be stellar, okay? I can't have anything that is not, that's not going to give the proper perception of me. And here's the thing, ladies, you're an extension of that. I need you to tighten it up. You got to do something with the hair. I don't know. You, the, the clothes, I don't know where, he's always picking at you. You know, like, I, have you always had that? What? No, that's 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 not gonna work. That's just not gonna work. So he also has this thing with power too. A lot of times they in positions, they like positions of power and authority because they like when people have to look up to them. And a lot of times I got a secret for y'all. You said you met him. Sometimes they in church. Sometimes they the ministers. Sometimes they the pastors. Oh, I'm sorry. I ain't trying to get in no trouble out here. I promise I'm not. But you got to think about it when a lot of times those positions of power and they have people, you know, coming to them. And, and it seems like, and such it's, it's, it's so easy to hide out there oftentimes because it's all rolling up to them. And, and sometimes it that culture, you know, that we cultivate in church, it kind of endorses that. But it could, it could be a, a, a secret narcissist. So what if you have a situation where. You marry a guy because I, I want to take you into the future. I want you, you to play this thing out because oftentimes we don't really play it out. And what if, you know, no matter what you do, it's not good enough. 
Okay, you can't lose enough weight. You can't get your hair styled good enough. You can't dress, you know, enough. Or he only wants to be, uh, well, well we're we not going to go over your people's house because they're crazy. You know, it's my family. But, well, they don't fit the image of perfection. And if we have children, now you understand our child has to be presented a certain way. I believe I was married to one. You probably was, Dieta. They are envy envious of your success and your great family and friends relationship. Yes, we're getting into it. We're getting into it. Okay. Runs from the truth. This is just great narcissist stuff that we about to get all up in it. Okay. Now, if you have a child, imagine you, you have a child with a narcissist. Everything is an extension. Everything attached to the narcissist is an extension of the narcissist. Okay. So that child is going to be that because all of this is about control, ladies. Okay, you know, be not okay, whatever. Uh, I don't know the word; it, it it escapes me, but it's okay. You know the scripture, all right? So, air all of it's about control. So the child's got to look a certain way. He's got to have on a little polo, Ralph Lauren, everything. You know, what I'm saying and the right shoes, and he, you better not get those dirty. All right, it's like he's a, he's a child, so they get dirty. That's what happens. But it's all about controlling everything in your sphere. First time on here, this is great. All right, favorite oh five, let's get it. Come on, share it with your people. You know, we getting it. We talking about narcissism. So now I'm, I always I got to give you the flip side of that. Okay, they accuse you of what they are actually doing. Yes, they do. Dancing for me, 610, Julia. All right. Um, the flip side is a, a guy who's not on that, he doesn't now, he can appreciate looking a certain way. Because I, I know for, you know, women, you like a guy to carry himself a certain way. I get that. You like when he takes care of himself. He, you know, takes some pride in his appearance. That's one thing. Okay. But is he's not doing that because that defines who he is. I, I, I'm trying to hide something, okay? Or I'm trying to present myself the best way for you, okay? I'm not looking at you having to present yourself the best way for me because you're an extension. It's, it's a totally different spin. So that guy is not going to have a problem with everything not being perfect because you want to have a guy who loves you flaws and all, right? I mean, because, you know, every day for you, you, you just had them days when, you know, you're doing your thing. And maybe I'm a little on edge, and, you know, if you talk to me wrong or, you know, it's or no matter what you tell me, I'm not feeling good. Well, you are not allowed to have bad days in his world. Let's 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 be clear with a narcissist. Your bad days are, you know, we're going to get into that a little bit more. OK, so just remember the best of everything. So you check that off the list. All right. Um, he has what. um Many would consider consider to have superior relationships. So that means that we talked about I ain't going over your family's house. I'm not going to per perception with him was bananas. Mm -hmm. They seldom give you compliments. Oh, no, no. They won't give you compliments unless they're in, other, in front of other people and they want it to appear like they're such a great uh, guy. Remember um, Blair Underwood and uh, is it Medea's family reunion? I think that's the one. He was a... He was, I believe he was a narcissist. I think he was crazy. Yes, I believe he was because, yeah, it's all about them, period. Mm, they easily become jealous. Yes, they do. We're going to get into that. So superior relationships, what does that look like? That means that I'm not going anywhere with those people. What do you mean those people? You know, I that's beneath me. OK, but then my then my peoples, you know, you're not going to come to the cookout because no, you, cause no, I'm not. Cause I, I don't, I don't, I don't like, first of all, I don't like where they live. Okay. And, um, that's just not my type of people. Okay. Now you're more than welcome to come to this corporate event that we're having. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What? No, you, 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 you don't want that. So like I said, everything in his world is an extension of his sense of this inflated ego. So imagine if you were in a relationship with this guy. God forbid you marry him, all right? And he's telling you that you, you, okay, his rib, the diamond, you can't go places. He's not going there with you because it doesn't represent who he wants to be. Or he wants to put you in or himself in environments with superficial, flaky, such a much people that, 
you know, come on, ain't nobody here real. You know, seriously. I mean, I get sometimes you got to do that, but I'm just saying because you got to be there because it's it's going to make you seem like you're more than something that you listen. Don't you know the scripture says that man looks uh, at, at the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. You know, so you really got to line up wh where are your values. But I get it if you're a doormat. You may say right now, I, I, I'm getting some of this and I'm hearing it. And I think I may be with a narcissist, but you still may feel a little, you know, you you may be a crack diamond. And so, yeah, Lori, what's up? Thank you. It's good to know I rock. I, I rock and I'm holding the rock. Yes. And you are the rock. You're the diamond. Okay. Listen, di diamonds, I mean, diamonds, doormats, doormats, be encouraged. You can do it. You can break away. You can get free. All right. We're moving right along. Moving, you know, sometimes we got to be careful with this, especially even in the church world. Okay, um, and I, I love the church world, it's, I'm, I'm out of that world, but sometimes we can have that superior association type deal, you know, relation. Oh, I, I don't, and it's easy to do it in church because I don't associate with sex. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, every once in a while, I like to do like imitations, but it's like, with, you know, the Pharisees and Jesus is like, you know, why does your master associate with publicans and sinners? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. You know, the superior association, they were narcissistic, like to the hill, you know, and it's easy, especially when you can use religion. All right. Spirituality to hide it. Well, I don't do that because God wouldn't approve. <laughs> I don't even know where the voice came from, but, you know, I like it. All right. So moving right along. They need constant, constant admiration. They have this sense of entitlement. So with this sense of entitlement, they expect people to do things for them um, you silly, but the truth. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my God. I love you cracking yourself up. I do Reverend. I, I think I'm funny now. Nobody else might not think I'm funny, but I do enjoy myself in a clean way. Okay. So keeping it moving. All right. So they expect favors. All right. Just because quiet, Tanya, they expect favors just because they think quiet Shawanda, just because they think they're so wonderful. So you should do this for me. All right. Like just because I show up. All right. They need a promoter. Of course they need a promoter. Um, Keish, just because I show up, you should offer me the car, the money, whatever, you know, I mean, shower me because it's me. I have graced you with my presence. Okay. Um, and also if they do happen to ask now, there's somebody right now that is, uh, is, is a public figure that uh, just so happens to be one of the candidates um, running for a particular political office. Um, I'm not going to get into no, no funny stuff, you know, because that's not the aim of this. But I can tell you that they are a poster child for what I'm describing. OK, that's all I'm going to say about it. All right. So moving right along. So if they do not get what they want, whatever they think that they're entitled to, if you withhold it from them, it is going to be a temper tantrum. Say it again. Temper tantrum from. Mm -hmm, they're gonna lose it. It's two year old veal. I mean, they will pout. They'll yell. They'll get mad. All right. Not saying that they've done anything. So hey, let's let's go into the future. Let's imagine. I had to see Tanya. I knew you was gonna cut against the grain. All right. So let's just imagine that you're married to this person who feels entitled. What? But what? What about you? See, it's one thing when they expect the faith, but are they going to do all of that for you? No, they're not, you know. And let me tell you something. Doormats do get tired. Okay? Doormats do get tired. You get tired at some point of being walked on, okay? Treat it insignificant. I mean, you can do it for a little while, especially if you got that. I'm a giver. 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 Yeah, you get that. But at some point, you're going to run out of gas. But let me tell you something, ladies, and this is real talk. A, 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 a real guy, a good guy, you know, that's not a counterfeit. He's going to give to you. Like he's not, it's not about this sense of entitlement thing. I did let him go. Thank you. I'm glad you let him go. Net cakes. It's not about this sense of entitlement. It's just, it's, it's just not, um, I, I, I'll give, 
before I even expect to get. You know, that's the real deal. You know, so when you give back to me, it's only because y'all know my philosophy, ladies. I'm all about the ministry of the man pursuing. And after he pursues you real good, all right, then, you know, you can kind of, oh, I'm going to do this. But you always give and you tell him I appreciate you. And, I, you know, if that's not enough, sir, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, he likes, the narcissist likes to manipulate others for their gain. Now, this is a big one. So you may think that he's buying the dress for you. No, he's buying the dress. So that you can look appropriate to be by his side. Mm, it's all about motivation. Okay. Or you may think that he gave, let somebody borrow some money, you know, manipulation expert level. Ooh, come on now. I know I'm getting, I'm going deep. Invite your people. You know what I'm saying? Invite more diamonds out here. Okay. So you may think, hey, he let me borrow some money. I needed it. Well, he let you borrow the money because he wanted it to be said of him how an am he's an amazing friend. Or I will go down and I will make this donation in church and then make a big deal out. But you know, I, I need cameras now. You know, who's going to be there? Well, when y'all going to do the one on TV? Because that's when I, because I'm going to bring a big check, you know, but I just want to make sure. Or he set it up in such a way, you know, that all the cameras is on and the lights and he's like very humble, you know, hey, you know, I just want to, you know, so much has been done for me and I just want to sow into this ministry. Okay, I'm on A. All right. Yeah, I just want to, um, you know, I'm just saying you got to be careful because it's all about motivation. Okay. Great manipulators. There is always an agenda to, yes, you done call someone out. I'm not, you know, you know, Keisha, I'm, I'm nonviolent. You know what I mean? I don't like to get in no trouble, but I just like to speak the truth in love. You feel me? So it's like nails with like a fuzzy glove over it. Uh -huh. So, but the manipulation thing is big. It can hurt. <laughs> um, the manipulation thing is, is huge. Okay. So if you with this guy, say you're married. Okay, you you holy matrimony and you're married now to a narcissistic manipulator. Okay, so you never know when he's telling you something. I love you. I care for you. Is it just because you need me to stay in this because how it would look if I decided I'm done because you treat me like crap? What would everybody think if they thought that you didn't have the perfect relationship? They're extremely romantic at first. Oh, yeah, because it's the web. Too good to be true. Well, you know, they are because they, they know but since manipulation and getting what they want is their thing. They got to know how to flip it. OK, so, yes, they become very good at the art of manipulation. All right. And um, if you if you're married to a person like that, that would become hell on earth real quick because as a woman you need to feel safe okay and how are you going to feel safe if you just don't know i don't know your why i, I don't know why why you're doing these things because i end up paying for them if i don't act or respond the way that you think i should but i'm gonna tell you ladies the guy you want it's not manipulation He's, if i tell you you're beautiful i'm Listen, it's because you're beautiful. If I'm a, if I'm doing something for you, I'm doing it for you. I don't need no cameras. I don't need. I listen. You can keep all that. You know. Let's just. I'm. I'm on you. All tangled up in that web. I know that web is something else, ain't it? It is something else. Here's a big one, on your checklist of am I dating a narcissist? They lack empathy. Old dude would tell me he loved me only if it served a purpose for him. Of course, you have some amazing examples, Tanya. I, I wish you would share and just throw some zingers out there um, that I can exploit. I would really appreciate that. Um, thank you. Moving on. All right. So they love to, they not love, but they lack empathy. So, you know, I can think of two situations that come to mind and I hear a lot of things. I do. And hello, no soul. Yeah. Uh, and both of them involve miscarriages. Okay. Where the young lady 
was having a miscarriage and the guy was there. Well, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the one. So she's having a miscarriage and he's he's about to leave. This is her husband. He's about to leave. And she's like, you know, going through, I don't, I don't think you should leave me, you know, here alone. What, what, what am I supposed to do? He says, he looks at her as she's there on the ground. And you can imagine what the scene looks like. Frankly, I don't give a blank what you do. And goes out the door to, by the way, see another woman. I, as sure as I'm black and y'all know I am. Now, with that being said, I'm not topless. No, this is a sweatshirt. Because I know some people thought I had writing on my chest. It's No, it's, it's, it's a sweatshirt. Um, yeah, I would have packed. Yeah, no, that's true story. True, true story. Yeah, um, yeah, true story. And um, so they lack empathy. So if you're going through something, okay, you're not allowed to have a bad day. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what planet they do that on. Um, yeah, I get it. Better not fall asleep. Well, she did leave him. Um, and she's crazy. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Like you, you cannot make this stuff up. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was about to share a little bit too much information about who it is. Okay. So, um, what was I saying? Okay. The lack empathy piece. So you're not allowed to have a bad day. So say work is, you know, you just having one of those days. It's, <laughs> it's work. It's, you know, kids, whatever, you know, if you're married, whatever. And you're just like, you know, you're just not feeling it. Well, he may feel like, you know, you're taking something away from him. Okay. If I miss what you said, then, you know, put it back out there. He may just say, no, you're taking, come on, you need to get over yourself. What are you doing? Because anything that takes attention away from him. All right. Say in that situation with the miscarriage. Well, if you got to go, so what you going to tell everybody you had a miscarriage so you can get all the sympathy? And so now it's about you. Okay. All right. Uh, somebody was telling me a story about, you know, it, it was uh, their birthday and the person, you know, it, they made it, but they was mad because it's your birthday. I mean, it's your woman's birthday. You mad? You know what I mean? Like it can't be about her. But yeah, I mean, so you can go through some of the most messed up situations and scenarios and they're not going to be there for you. They're not going to be there for you. But on the other hand, that a guy who really cares and really loves you, okay, he's going to be like in that miscarriage situation. I mean, you know, he's picking her up. He's you're in the car. You know, we're weaving in and out of traffic. That's what we're doing right now. But situation like that. When you start feeding his ego, he goes searching for someone else that does. He either will do that or he may just, he may get a little violent. He could, he could get a little disruptive. Um, it just depends on him. It just depends on how nuts he is. You feel what I'm saying? Um, moving right along. Now, somebody had mentioned this. Hey, what's up? What's going on? What's that? I uh, G A peach one G A peach two. Um, they can just cut you off if you don't comply. Yes, mine got violent. See, it depends. You got different kind of narcissists. Maybe I should do a book on narcissists. Georgia Peach, what's happening? Um, see, some of the violent type. Some me beg and plead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, um, and you know some. Yeah, you really only got those two options, really. Violent or big. Or maybe a combination thereof. Um, or the guilt thing. Oh, so you're going to leave me? Okay, well, fine. You know what I mean? If you want to leave me after all I've done for you, after all I've done for you, I stood by, you know, he's going to run off a list of crap. Like, you've, not, you've done nothing for him. You've done absolutely nothing for him. But he's done a whole laundry list of things for you. Sir, please, sit down. Okay, get out of my life. All right, moving along. The narcissist has a very fragile ego, very fragile self-esteem. Um, this is very apparent. Um, got a plate of barbecue smash in my no, you didn't. Mm, a plate, Reverend. I hope it was a paper plate. I, I really hope it was. Okay, now. They won't really tell you this. They won't really admit it. You can't hear me. 
can't hear me. Hello, you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Why do we gotta go there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, okay, can hear you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay, you can, I get it. All right, God bless you. I appreciate y'all, y'all Johnny on the spot. All right, so they are really envious of people. OK, because if somebody has more than they have, if somebody has what they want, if somebody's flossing harder than they are, somebody else is getting the shine. That's not going to sit well with them. They may have something like so really he just had to buy the next model up Mercedes. I mean, really and park it next to mine. See, that's what I'm talking about. He's petty. OK, I used to date a narcissist. He was nuts. One of the biggest liars I've met in my life. Yes, they will. They will do whatever they have to do for it to be about them. OK, so like I said, if somebody else is balling out of the gym more than they are, God forbid, it's you. All right. Because he will really load that about you. It'll be a very I can't say love, hate relationship because they don't know how to love. Yes. If they're breathing, they're lying. Mm -hmm. it's, it, and see, they don't see it as lying. Whatever they got to do to get what they want. You know, every, everything is an option. I know he got mad because I was done and ignored him. See that oh, and the ignoring. They can't take it. They can't take the ignoring lie, cheat, steal, whatever, and not feel about it at all. Oh, y'all firing off. Listen, we, we've got some people around here that, that have dealt with this narcissism, narcissism thing. And um, they're paranoid oftentimes that people are envious of them, jealous of them, you know, um, Saying, you know, all they, 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 they hate me because they ain't me. You know, I mean, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? They, they wish they was me. They wish I had what I had. So the reason that they got to hate on me is because da, 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 da. So everybody's going to hate on you because they ain't you. All right. It's that, you know, them against me mentality. All right. So there again, ladies, blocked him. I know he hates it. You should block him. The blocking ministry will bless you. It really, it will, it will really bless you. So if you're with a, 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 a guy who like, say you get married to him and how, so how, what are you going to do if he is, if you're the one he's jealous of, okay, that that's not going to work. You get an award at work, you get promoted at work. All right. You're doing well at work. You're moving up through the ranks. God, but what if, what if he's a director and you become a VP, you know, or what if he's a, you know, low level manager, and you become a director. It's not going to, ooh, no, 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 no. His, it's going to be some serious haterade. This dude lied and said his mom died. Won't he do it? Listen, I am, I wish I had a talk show. Wow, seven kids, crazy. Oh, no, y'all got some good stories, okay? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something to it. Um, and now, here's a big one, ladies. You got to listen to this. You got to listen to this. They hate criticism. They hate, if you criticize a narcissist, you better duck, okay? Because that is the one thing that penetrates anything. They hate to be criticized. They will get mad, they will get pissed off, and it's about to be some trouble in the city, okay? And here's the thing, it don't even have to be like you tell them, oh, you suck at that, you know, or, you know, you're totally freaking incompetent. No, 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 no. It don't even have to be like that. It could just be you making a friendly suggestion like, hey, m maybe next time you can try like this. Well, what's wrong with the way I'm trying it? You know what I'm saying? See, that's the problem. You don't never know how to support nobody. Like, I, I'm trying to help you. The dude lied and said he had cancer. I mean, y'all not, is this is for real? Golly. OK, so listen, on the crit on the on the criticism piece, if you got a guy and you'd say, you know, give him a suggestion or try to help him out or just, hey, you know, hey, we ain't perfect. I didn't like that. And this guy wants to go, you know, go ham on you, get violent. I'm trying to tell you, doormats. Now, you maybe you're not a doormat. OK, whatever. That's not a situation you want. You really want to get out of Dodge. I don't care what he says. Um, now, I'm I'm talking about now, obviously, any one of these things, you know, you need to address. But if somebody is like rating off the scales on all of these ladies, you have a narcissist and you need to run as fast as you can. Oh, utilize the. Uh huh. Yep. Utilize the black ministry. OK, uh, he, my husband lying now and saying he you, now preacher. Wait a minute. They get violent, then blame it on you. That's good, Tanya. 
Your husband is lying now saying he has cancer. The devil is a... But that, they, they will blame it on you. They'll sell you out. Um, how does that work, Reverend? See, you know, it, it just never fails. Always somebody's got a zinger. Um, how does that work that he has cancer and he, he's blaming it on you? No, I'm sorry. I've mixed two things. Um, yeah, that's what happens. Doc, I just don't have any patience for any of these symptoms. Well, you shouldn't. Yeah, you, you really shouldn't have. I, I, I hope everybody doesn't. But the reality is there are a lot of women that do have patience. Um, like I said, if, if you are a true blue um, card carrying doormat, you know, this is going to be your thing. You're going to have patience for it. It just is what it is. Uh, but yeah, the the young they hate criticism and they want to get revenge. Dieta, yes, they do. Met one blamed his existing erectile dysfunction on me. Ooh, exact existing erectile dysfunction. Um, ooh, that has set a bomb off in a room full of women. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> How he's going to blame his erectile dysfunction on you? That's crazy. It was always someone else's fault. It, well, it can't be their fault because then that takes the... Tanya, don't say nothing. Uh, right, exactly. Because I know you can take that and go a lot of different directions, but I just need you not to. All right. So let's get to the heart of the matter because people don't just pop out of the womb. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, people don't just pop out of the womb and end up being narcissists. You know, there's a great deal of fear there, fear surrounding um, any type of shame, vulnerability or humiliation. If they are humiliated, criticism is one thing. Humiliation is something totally different. OK, um, LOL, who me? Yes, you. Um, humil for them to be hu humiliated is the kiss of death. They cannot take that in any way, shape or form because that's their greatest fear is that the truth will be found out that they're not perfect. They're not amazing, that they're not all that they portray themselves to be. OK, and that's the last thing they can afford to happen. Yeah, fake deaths, fear, insecurity, low self-esteem, all of that, all of that. So if you with somebody who can't show their scars can't show you the flaws, you know, and all part, then you got a major problem. And I'm trying to tell you, you better run as fast as you can, as fast as you able in the opposite direction. Now, I agree. It's a mess when you have dated a narcissist. And the crazy part is the breakup is difficult. Yes. Yes, it is. Because that's when you a crack diamond. You know, you a diamond, but you a crack diamond. Um, I have to shout out Tanya for that phrase. Yes, what are they? Um, because as it, it still doesn't mean that you're not all in. It don't mean that your emotions haven't gotten involved. And, and for a doormat, you know, when you have that, I really want to please. I really want to. I'm, I'm a team player. I'm a ride or die. Um, it, it, you, you still have, have to go through those symptoms. Your head tells you this is wrong. You need to get out of it. It's totally the worst thing. But this something, this thing is something in your chest is telling you it's, it's saying something totally different. Now, just one last piece. I want to add. How does a person get to be this way? Somebody, yeah, I got some great examples. So sometimes they cry and beg and act dramatic to keep you. Uh, yes, of course. What are they going to do? Like I said, it's either the begging or the pleading or to just flat out get mad. Um, but why does a narcissist end up being a narcissist? Well, oftentimes it's not all the time, but most of the time it starts out in childhood. And so with their parents, the parents may take what they consider to be the acceptable traits or qualities and glorify those, you know, um, praise them for those. Now, any fears or faults that that child may have severely punished and disciplined. So they learn real quick that I need to, because this part is not always who I am. His mother was a crackhead. No joke. It just, you can't make this stuff up. So, um, I've learned real quick that I can only be this. This is the only thing that's acceptable. Now who I really am, some of the other stuff I deal with, I can't show that that's not acceptable. So if they're raised in a household like that, that is a perfect um, environment to raise a narcissist. But at the end of the day, guess what, ladies? That's not your problem. It, it's not your problem. But if, if you're a doormat and you're, or, you know, when I say you're a doormat, some, you, nobody's ever just one 
you know, doormat guard the CEO. You can be combinations of things. And somebody catch you at the right time, you can be on your whole doormat grind. Um, and we think we can help them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Nope, they need to get help. Not my issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, your person has to grow to that point. So the thing is, yeah, what 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 happens for you if you're dating a narcissist and you feel like you can't get out of it? I mean, that's real talk. You know you need to get out of it. But just like, I can't get out of it. Okay. Um, well, one of the things you do is you reach out to me and, you know, we talk about it. We do the 30 minute consultation. I say this every week, you know, and we talk about putting you on a coaching program because especially if you're a doormat, if you do your whole doormat thing, um, then it's very difficult. It's very difficult for you to pull out and you really need, because in that instance, you really lack strength and you do need someone to lean on. To help you get through that. And and it's, you know, why are you the doormat? Why? Why? Because here's the thing. If you're the doormat, you're going to exchange one narcissist for another one. Okay. Because doormats tend to be attracted to those very domineering, controlling personalities. Okay. I appreciate you, Keith. Y'all better give Doc a call. You can't get out of it alone and stay out. I appreciate that. Lord knows I do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's real talk. I mean, you need to talk to somebody. You know, that's not something, you know, in our community we talk about a lot of times or we don't even know really what that looks like. But um, you don't want to stay there because even if, like I said, you get out of that relationship, what's going to happen with the next relationship if you don't fix those issues? You will get sucked back in without help. Hey, listen, and it's easy. It's easy to, I mean, because you'll, you'll meet a different guy, okay, same same scenario, but you'll think it's different. You'll think it's different because the guy is different. But at the same time, you're not you're in for for a lot of doormats. What gets you is you need not need uh, not need to be needed, but um, your desire to give. What is the difference between a narcissist and a sociopath? Well, a sociopath is typically a, a person who like I'm going to scam a, a you know. I'm going to take out a bunch of people, you know, like, you know, I'm running this Ponzi scheme and I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm taking advantage of a bunch of people, you know, not just the one-on-one, you know, relationship. Um, and, and that's, that's what I think is the, the basic difference, you know? Um, but I mean, it's the same narcissistic behavior. It's the same. It's all about me. It's the same. I, I'm insensitive. I can't feel anything. No conscience in both. Right. I, I, I don't feel anything like so your pain. I don't that that doesn't mean anything. The fact that I hurt you, that doesn't mean you you know, you shouldn't have been there. I mean, why were you standing there? That's that's, that's your fault. It's not my fault. Narcissist I dated was a predator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, predator. I thought you was going to say he was a preacher. I'm sorry. Sociopaths or scammers. It's not just emotional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I like watching American Greed. Because to me, for those people that take all those people's millions and millions and millions of dollars and then be in jail talking about, listen, I, 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 I plan to pay them back. You know, I just some my situation has got locked up, sir. You spent all the money, like on a boat and some houses and some cars. Like, how did you plan to pay them back? No, no. That see, what you don't understand is, yeah, it's never their fault. Never their fault. Never their fault. But also, mine was a preacher, violent and all. See, and that's another thing, ladies. You know, you got to be careful. Now, there's some great, great, amazing guys that love God. You know church, praise and worship, the whole nine yards is for real for them. Um, the ear hustle well. They ear hustle well. Oh man, what you told me about the ears being that was funny. Um but there's some guys that can hide out because they know that that the position of minister or whatever, for some guys, they 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 manipulate that. They they use that to to pimp women. You know, and I mean pimp in the sense of, you know, get them to do what they want them to do. And they say, oh, you know, well, God, and then you say, God, you know, God told me to do it. Really? God told you to do that? But they hide behind the scriptures. Get your ears pregnant. <laughs> You're right. 
to get your ears pregnant. That's what had me weak. Pimp in the pulpit. Y'all got some good ones tonight. Choke what? Smoke wait. Wait, mine too. Smoke weed choke me and then ready to sing at all oh, 10 a.m. Smoke weed choke you and then ready to sing at 10 a.m. Gotta be there for praise and worship service. Can't be late. And Bessie you're gonna be dressed to the nines. Pimping. Yeah, uh, okay. I didn't see all of that. Yeah. So if you know that. Okay, some of some of these guys that we see in the church, because I mean, you want a guy who loves God, and you know what I'm saying, but you got to know some other stuff to look out for. I said pimping in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it happens, and 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 the only way that you're gonna recognize that it's going on, you got to know what to look for. But before that, you got to know who you are, because trust me, if you if you knew who you were and what you weren't gonna settle for, a narcissist. I mean, you you would spot it a mile off. You you wouldn't even, they couldn't even get in your, you know what I mean? They couldn't even get in your circle, your 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 presence because you'll see it. But the pimp ministry, yes, yes, they ha- yes, that's what I am. Late. Oh, guess what? That get wait yes, that's what I am late. Learning. Oh, I got it. The narcissist I dated would have you fooled, Doc Reed, because he was so. You know what? People to shake my hand and you know all that stuff. I people. I, I get what you're saying, and I know there's some good ones. I know there's some great ones. Make me cover my bruises so congregation didn't see wearing jackets. Wow, wow. There, there, there are some good ones out here. That are professional master manipulators. No, he wouldn't have food, Doc. Oh, uh, he's a man who doesn't. Yeah, Bec- yeah. I, 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 I'm pretty cool on because people they leave breadcrumbs. There's signs. Hey, what's up, Kendra Spirit? They leave signs. You know that you're just like, okay, yeah, you've been a little too. You know, you just observe. But see, that's what you gotta do. That's what I try to teach you, ladies. You gotta watch. Don't just listen to what a guy is saying, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, a guy is not going to be moved by the same thing that, you know, a woman is going to be moved by. But somebody who's just always, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, oh, man, you just, you know, but, you know, I like to see people in different settings. Men aren't emotional like us. Yeah. I like to see you in different settings. OK, um, so like I said, some are very good, but if you know what you're looking for. There are always signs. There are always signs. Yes, there are. Faith 601. There are always signs. So, but for you, if you're not really aware, you know, you can get blindsided. You know, you can get tricked. You can get fooled. Um, I promise you, I saw no signs. Yeah, see, I, 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 I wish I could just rewind so I could sing and, you know, almost like a class and be like, see, this right here, this was a sign. You missed that. There are a million red flags in 90 days. Oh, yeah. The 90 days, that'll bless you. You know, uh, you probably ignored the signs. Well, we too busy getting swept off our feet. Yeah, that's that's easy, too. It's, it's very easy, you know, because of a guy. If he's a master manipulator, he knows what to say, knows what to do. Always signs people don't want to see them. Well, here's the deal. Some people really don't know what's a legitimate sign. It's not to say that they didn't see it. Like if I don't, if I'm in a different place and we don't have stop signs, I see that red object with white writing on it. That means nothing to me. I'm I'm gonna keep going. It says stop, but we don't have those. I don't know what stop signs. So you can see it, but you don't interpret it. So it's like my people perish, right? For lack of knowledge. So, you know, she, she could have seen some things and just not known all oh, that as a sign. So it happens a lot, but that's why you got to get your knowledge game up. It's not rocket science. Sit back, open those eyes and close them ears. Or we don't give the relationship enough time to get to know one another. Yep. See, that's what Keisha was talking about on the 90 days. You know, you need to, let me say this, ladies, you need to see him mad. He needs to see you mad. You can feel it, but you tell yourself you are just being crazy. That's true too. But let me, this point, you, when you first meet somebody and it seems amazing, 
you can't make any snap decisions until y'all get into it. Until y'all get into it. And I don't mean that you have this. Ah! But what I'm saying is you need to see what's their conflict resolution style. If they have one, do they know how to resolve conflict? All right. Are they going to pout? Are they going to yell? Are they going to hit something? Are you or are they going to say, you know what? Uh, my bad. Or even if, if they think it's you, you're the problem going through it now. Doc is right. If they think you le- legitimately, they have a case, you know, but to try to say, OK, listen, here, here's why I believe what I believe. You said, you know, facts, uh, see the bad come out. Uh, the real person will eventually show up. Wait and see what he does. Yeah. You know, because to really resolve a conflict, you would say, hey, listen, you know, this is why I'm thinking what I'm thinking because blah, 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 blah. It don't have to get, ah, 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 ah. You don't, we don't have to pout. We don't, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Yes, sir. How does he or she argue, fight? Right. So a lot of times we make decisions too quickly based off the good things, all the gifts you're giving, all of the, the wonderful text messages that you're sending, you know, the phone calls and, you know, maybe we took a little trip somewhere, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's going real good. You calling me, you send me teddy bears, it's da, 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 da. you're speaking to my love language. But we ain't had a disagreement yet. We meet representatives in the beginning, waited, waited out. Yeah. And so, and I'm not saying just necessarily to totally withhold everything about yourself, you know, until, you know, I mean, you're going along with the relationship and you're getting to know, that's what you're doing. You're getting to know each other, but you'll know when you come up on that, that thing, and you have a situation and it probably won't take that long, depending on, you know, what it is and um, how that gets worked out will tell you a lot. OK, are you really the guy who says that you'll chase me and run after me no matter what? You're never going to lose me. Oh, OK, well, how about when, um, you know, you got mad at me and I didn't hear from you? I don't, where, where's the chasing in that? You know, you you pouting. What what are we doing? I don't I don't feel special. I don't feel pursued. Do they throw your dog or at out in the window when they are angry? What did somebody do that? I know something and see what happened. Um, ain't no chasing pouting. Say no to something and see what happens. Hey, that's a good. Hey, that definitely show you something. Okay, did somebody throw somebody's cat out the window and dog out the window ever? Did they did they do that? Now that will show you something. I mean, that they just flat out crazy. I mean, I don't even think you need any other extra evidence for that to to, to understand. Sad but true. Are you the, the police officer, Reverend? You might not be. I'm sorry if I'm just putting you out there like that. But I know somebody's out here is, is a cop. Um, one man killed the dog and fed it to the lady. Where did I get this stuff from? I knew that was you, preacher. Um, he needs to be arrested. Yes, does. I now I bet you got some stories. I bet you can share some things. That's what I want to know. Crazy. I want to know insanity. It was in the news. I backed off from him. He barely calls texts. I'm done chasing him, begging for his time. Well, see, you shouldn't have been begging him in the first place. That's where you, 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 mm -mm, no, 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 no. You know that. I teach there's no begging. You should not be begging no man for nothing ever. If you have to beg him for something, this is a problem. It's a problem. Okay. Yes. No, no begging ladies. Okay. From this day forward, no begging. A guy told me he hoped I got raped and deserved it because I wanted to go out and he didn't feel like going. Listen, I'm getting slightly overwhelmed. <laughs> I mean, I'm the botch, just sickness. See, Doc, our narcissist stories are even. I mean, no, seriously, for real. They're wild. <laughs> Y'all stories are, I mean, I, you know, it's like, you know that it exists, right? You know what I mean? You know there's a Mars. I've never been there, you know. But this is what the hell. Um, leave him. Yeah, these, these, I mean, to tell you, I hope that you get raped. Because you want to go out and I 
don't want to go out. Like, who, who who resorts to that? You know what I mean? Well, I know who resorts to that. You know, now, if he was a narcissist, a true blue, you know, definition of a narcissist, I don't know. But he was a sick job. I can tell you that. He was definitely a sicko. To say that to your woman. And you know what? That That's a pouting moment. That was that was an, an attempt to to control you. Or you're not giving me what I want. So I hope... I heard, you know what it was? Hurt people hurt people. I thought I had, he wanted you to hurt because he was felt like you hurt him. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another thing, ladies, you got to watch out for that. Narcissists do that. If somebody hurts you because they feel like you hurt them, need to run and never look back. Yes, you need to, because here's the thing. And when I say just because they say you hurt them, it doesn't mean that you legitimately hurt them. Like I said, it, you know, narcissists can't stand to be criticized. OK, so he may think, well, you also oh, you're going to and God forbid you say something, you know, let's just say your guy, he's you had a picnic or party or something and he trips. He, you know, he doesn't hurt himself. He's good. But he gets uh, on his shirt. Oh, uh, you know, he, everybody's good. They see he's good. And they laugh. Ah, he look over and you kind of chuckle. <laughs> you baby. All right. Whoo. It's going to be a problem. I would ask him, does he want a mama rate lord? Uh oh yeah, you can go hard, Keish. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and so that humiliation. I mean, he just might snap. He just might lose it, or you, somebody's you're gonna pay for it later on. Now it could get physical. It could get wild because all he can see is you know it's really childhood when you know he was humiliated. He was made to feel like crap. He was made to feel like he was nothing for being human. You know, just frailties and you know so now i'm reliving that moment all over again and you laugh like not laugh like ah you stupid you know but just like oh baby you guys on your shirt and the cake on your face you, you look crazy he's gonna be seething you the only one who ain't gonna be laughing him uh one day that got rejected as a kid one i dated got rejected yep you need to love yourself during a fight with well, I, mean, I didn't see all of that yeah, the love yourself piece, um, that's true. Just a lot of people don't know how to do it. Um, simple, not easy um, on it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's the most amazing advice ever, but a lot of people just don't know how to love themselves. There's there's a lot of guilt, you know, because a lot of women, you know, you, go, you have your own stuff from childhood and why you do what you do. And it makes it very difficult for you to even know um, back the game. Back to the cat. Wow. Yeah, we're on, we're on the cat. Um, that's going to preach all night, right? Um, well, not preach, but um, anyway, y'all got some amazing stories. I love this, though. I mean, to me, I was just telling uh, Tanya, that I like to the, I like to be where the people are. I mean, this is I need this. It's not easy to love yourself. Even when you say you do, you don't really. Well, and, and true, Tanya, and it's about just knowing how. Yeah, I, I love myself. You know, what does that mean? You know, it's like we, we, a lot of us weren't taught how to love ourselves. You know, parents didn't just say, OK, listen, I'm going to show you. You know, maybe that took you to church, you know, and put you in front of, you know, you're going to get that word. You're going to, you know, but even sometimes that has to be, you know, for the babies, you know, chew it up, spoon feel it, feed it, you know. Um, uh, dating a narcissist will have. I got to figure that one out. Um, starts with looking at yourself in the mirror every day. I say, I love you. Yeah, I get you on that. Right, right there, just words until you learn what that means. And what, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You say, I love you in the mirror and it's just it's bouncing off, you know. It's like a sponge versus pouring water on a, uh, a hard countertop. It's not absorbing. I'm pouring the water. I'm doing the thing that is that would, you know, soak up something in something else or I pour it in a plant in the dirt, you know, and it makes the plant grow. But this hard countertop is, is not absorbing. So how do you, because now I feel guilty. Positive thoughts bring positive outcomes. But some people have a, and I'm, I'm not knocking anything you say. I agree with all of that in terms of positive thoughts, loving yourself. But for some just find it very challenging. They, they need some hand holding. They need someone to, because there's some other barriers they're doing it and they're like, what, what's not happening? Why am I not getting the results? I'm telling myself I love myself. I'm telling myself this. And I'm telling myself that and that. But it's like, but there's something deep down, okay, that hasn't been resolved. There's something that's preventing it from taking root. 
you know, and sometimes you got to get to, you know, the bottom of that. You know, that's what I work with my clients on. You know, what's that thing that so easily besets you? What keeps getting you hung up and hung up and hung up and hung up? OK, need help. Reach out. You know, the reach out thing. Yeah, reach out. You really have to explore what the real meaning of love is and how that should play out in your life. Honey went through. Uh, forgive you. Um, forgive you is a big piece. A lot of women have, carry a lot of guilt, carry a lot because there was a lot of blame from, you know, childhood. You this, you that, you know, you know. so they felt it was a responsibility to, 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 to carry the burden, you know, and if something was went wrong, you know, they were conditioned to believe it was always their fault. So even if the relationship was horrible and they, you know, got out of it. It's like, I deal with the guilt. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why, what, what did I do? You know, what did I do to make it not work? You know, even if, someone could really say that with a narcissist, what did I do to contribute to the relationship with this narcissist not working? That sounds like an oxymoron. So, but here's the thing. So, right. Self-blame. What would cause that person to do that? I mean, just, you know, no attachment, none of that, not being in a relationship. Most people will say, oh, that's crazy. It's nuts. But people do it every day. Forgiveness is definitely an initial stepping stone to self-love. I was raped by, ah, you, I was, when you said you was raped by, but could you type that again? Because I see it. fear sometimes. Uh, can you put that again? Because I, I I only saw like the first part, and the, whatever you said sounded like it was powerful. Read if you if we shared our entire narcissist story with you, you'd be crying for us. Okay, well I, I'm not a beyond crying, Reverend. I'll go in. You know, I, but I I need to. Here's the deal. I need to know, especially doing this and you know trying to help. I need to know the reality of what people are dealing with. She was raped by someone. She, wow. And see that, that right there. Sorry to hear that you are, that happens so much. That right there, women being taken advantage of and made to feel powerless um, happens a lot. And you know what? Here's the thing. A lot of times it doesn't, it go. it goes unreported. You know what I mean? Because. For many different reasons, a guy may make a threat. If you do it, I'll come back. I'll do this. I'll do it. It's the shame. It's the who's gonna believe me? I'm out, I'm out on a date with this dude, you know. So they may be like, "Well, why'd you go out with him?" Okay. So that happens so much. Now he's a cop, and uh, wow, wow, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I hope he's not the same person. I hope. Something changed, you know, but you are, I mean, to just take somebody's, you know, oh my God, that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I figured you would say it was interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think I applaud you for even being able to have processed it to the point where you can share it, you know, in a, in a form like this. So I'm hoping that means that to some degree... Um, you've gotten some counseling or talked to someone about that and um, hopefully can help others, young girls not put themselves in a situation. He needs to go to jail and get raped. Well, yes. Um, and you know, I, and I just said, put yourself in a situation, but because I don't want to make it sound like it was your fault, like you put yourself in a situation because it can happen and you think it's a very safe situation. Now, maybe what you might have to do, ladies, and carry a little something, something on you, okay, you know, because I'm going to make sure my daughter's got a little something, something on them in case, you know, young man want to get out of hand, you know, you might have to just let them know this is this is not what it's going to be, not tonight, okay, um, whatever that is, just something that's going to give you a little time to to get out of this situation, okay. Okay, I'm not going to tell him to just shoot him just yet, Keish. Uh, but, you know. Oh, you talking to her. Um, I always carry a knife now. Yes, I have a hard time trusting a man. Yeah, well, see, that's... Uh, you know, I've been thinking about getting my concealed carry myself. Um, 
I feel like this is a good time to say dump Trump again. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus Christ. You know what, Reverend? I can always count on you to just, if we're here, you're, you're definitely going to go here. Or maybe here or sometimes here. Okay. Um, Glocks work well. Yes. You know what? I enjoy this crowd of um, free, emancipated, free-thinking women <laughs> who carry weapons and enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's like a good day in America. <laughs> yes, we're divas. We're packing. You know what I mean? That's that's a good look. <laughs> it's a real good look, you know? You probably got motorcycles and like crotch rockets. Yeah, anyway. Um, no, that's cool. It's cool. I mean, but you know what? Seriously, though, that's unfortunately what it has come to in terms of a woman having to protect herself. Chicks with guns. I dig it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about these. You know what I mean? We're talking about, you know, a little something, something. But you you got to... And, and, and see, sometimes, especially with guys, now, in situations like that, are there signs? I don't know. There could be. I mean, but there are some guys who just, they play the nice card. You know, no, it's just... A, yeah, oh, no, it's cool. You know, whatever. You know, um, and... He tries and just he goes and tries to push. Check the record. That's why I work out to be strong. Yes. Keep working out. Doing what you got to do. Okay. To be strong. But ladies, these, the narcissist thing. Now, y'all stories are amazing. Before I was a cop, I had a Glock. People are crazy and I'm a small lady. The devil is a liar. Yeah. Wow. Both are good. I have a taser. This is the conversation just changed. It just went someplace different, actually. Um. <laughs> oh my God! If somebody just saw like that part, like I got a Glock, I got a knife, I got a travel bat, they would be like, "This said it was about narcissists." I don't. What? What is this? My ex, though, he was never wrong. Thought he was never wrong. We got pissed for. I know. I know. And I, I'm with you. I'm just saying it was just like a real, like you know non-sensitive moment you know it got real in here real quick <laughs> it was funny like just take a snapshot of that it was it was it was bless you so listen is there anyone that like you know right now you're dating a narcissist like you know okay I, yeah he's that he's, he's definitely all of those that we talked about because y'all got some the, the stories for some of the guys y'all dated Y'all dated some serious narcissist sickos, okay? And I'm not like throwing shade, none of that, because that's that's not my thing. My my thing is to encourage and you know support. But wow, I'm just that really. I'm it's on them, you know. Is there one come to the altar? Yes, yes. This is the, you know altar call. This is the part of the relationship church service when you know if you want to be saved. If you want your relationship to be saved, you... No, I'm serious. I'm just playing. No, I'm just playing. Tanya had me out here. But listen, um, so I, I hope that you guys um, enjoyed it, ladies. I hope that... You know you're a diamond. You don't, don't forget that. I didn't even know what a narcissist was until I met my ex. Well, I'm sorry you had to find out that way. I was in a situation with one for way too long. He was married. To money, yeah. Well, the money is an extension, probably of the, you know, the, the inflated ego, and you know, I can be these things, and you know, it allows me to to ball out. You know, I have seen lots of red flags make me not even want to go out anymore. No, 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 don't do that now. They make you think you're crazy. See, I, I get it. Ladies, and she said makes her not want a lolly. I hope I'm saying your name right um, or your username. My ex was one. Um, don't let it get you to the point, ladies, where you just say, I'm done. I can't. It's, t it's too much madness out here. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Laura. OK, thank you. Um, yes, it's, it can be crazy, but you just got to, you know, 
make sure, you know, there's some good ones out here. They do the Jedi mind trick on you. Yeah, but trust me. Guys ain't, listen, I'm trying to tell you, I promise on everything. Guys ain't as smart. Y'all give guys way too much credit. We ain't that bright. I just left and got my life back. I'm getting a cat. Don't retreat. Just refresh. Um, <laughs> a cat. Yeah, Jedi mind tricks, and they play the victim. But if you know what you're looking for, they hiding in plain sight. Everyone not like that. Yeah, they hiding in plain sight. So if you know the triggers, like, okay, you're trying to Jedi mind trick me, but I see the trick. It's not a trick. You know what I mean? It's like, but you got to get the knowledge. You got to understand men. You got to understand how we think. You got to understand. You got to understand yourself. You know, I'm telling tell you, a lot happens when you understand more about yourself. When you understand more about what has caused you to make some of the decisions that you make, some of the deep hurt and pain that you're dealing with that has never, ever been resolved, never been resolved. You've been just functionally dysfunctional, you know, and you've been going around and going to work and doing things and, you know, looking quite normal. But no, there's some there's some brokenness, there's some serious brokenness that you have just learned how to just live over. You know, it's always been there, but it's like a wound that you just never go to the doctor and get looked at and it heals wrong. It happens to the best of us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there, there's no shame about if anybody's out here, even if you haven't typed anything, you watching and you like, yeah, I'm I, I'm, in, I'm just too embarrassed to mention the situation that I'm in. It's, it's crazy on several different levels. Hey, there's no shame. Everybody's out here done some stupid stuff. I've done some stupid stuff. You know, guys have done some stupid stuff. You know, don't let anybody tell you any different. But that's not what's important. What's important is what you do now. Okay, moving forward to get the help that you need, you know. Um, and as I say, hit me up. You know, let's get the ball rolling. Let's do the 30-minute consultation and then let's talk about coaching. No judgment here. Yeah, it's all love. It's all love. I, I really appreciate y'all. And I know some of y'all didn't even share all the stories that you could, um, which I'm sad about because I enjoy the stories. But um, I, I now you didn't share the one story, Tanya, about the driving, did you? When you drove on the Thanksgiving, incorporate Doc into your monthly maintenance regimen. Yes. Okay. I appreciate that. Once again, I'm glad I'm hearing this tonight. No, you can. I don't know if I have all the parts right. Um, I know you drove him. It was on Thanksgiving, right? And he wanted you to drive him somewhere to have Thanksgiving all the way, like a couple hours away or something. And he got out the car and you dropped him off. And then like you didn't, he didn't invite you in. Either you went back home. Yeah, you saw that one, Keish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, his grandmother's. Yes, and it wasn't a... Listen, I'm trying to tell you, when you taste my grandmama's yams, you gonna go through those... It wasn't that at all. It was, thank you. I don't even know if you got the thank you, but it was like, all right, see you. Night, night. God bless you. Maybe you didn't even get that. Maybe it was like, all right, then. You went home alone. Wow, that just breaks my heart every time I hear it. Yes, yes, Lord, he was, is, I don't know if he's changed. Yes, crazy, and it was a last-minute trip on a holiday. On a holiday. That's why I do this, because I can't, I don't want anybody to deal with that. That was the first time he told me he loved me. I'm sorry, like, I'm confused on so many different levels now. So, he told you on the way to the grandparents that I love you? Like to get you to take him, and you also listen. If y'all haven't heard Tanya's story, I don't know which video it's on on YouTube. My YouTube username is Reed C E G or one Reed C E G one, or I'm sure you can type in Doc Reed. But that story is nuts. No, when we got there, cause he knew I was suspicious. Then he leaves you on a holiday. No, was it really his grandparents, or was it another? Woman's house. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think I'm blowing my mind, but I, I, yes, because it's just all experience. No, it wasn't his grandparents, or was it? What was it? Why would? Yeah, tell me. Okay. Come on. 
Come on. It was it was his, his secret baby mamas. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. On a holiday. So here's the deal. Perfect example, ladies. This is a holiday. It's Thanksgiving. It's a time for togetherness, family, friends, closeness. This joker has her drive. How, how, how long was the drive? How long was the drive, Tanya? I know it was something like longer than I would have w wanted to drive on Thanksgiving. That forced me to do his hair. Oh, and forced me to do his hair first. How long was the drive, preacher? Because that's two hours. Yes, two hours. Okay. On Thanksgiving, two hours one way. Okay, that is, I would have run him over, get him fly. For his day. Yeah, yeah. Playing mind tricks. So when we talk about not having the, the, the ability to empathize with you, okay? Didn't care that you drove your car one way, then turned to go right back. So four total hours. Didn't care that you drove your car. You took your time to get him beautified for his other, you know, woman or whatever, girlfriend, mama, baby mama, and just said, hey, thanks, appreciate it, be safe, and just go home. Like, that's a narcissistic trait, your whole day gone, gone. And so how are you supposed to feel after that? Didn't even get a plate. Shawanda, you stupid. Horrible. I would have went in her house and ate her food. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, you know. Uh, did you know, I don't even know if you remember if you said it was his, uh, did you knew that at the time? No play, didn't care that I had nowhere to go. Oh, God, you're killing me right now. I'm tenderhearted, ladies. Let, let me just be clear, okay? I'm sensitive and I'm tenderhearted, okay? So these stories, as as much as I want and need to hear them, they break my heart. Yes. That's a full day of work. Yeah, it is. That is, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm on a mission to keep women from having to experience that kind of crap. That's the clue grandma would invite you in. Yeah, you would think. Didn't know until months later where I actually drive him to. I can say this, though. I, I don't think that anyone would be able to do that to you now. Um, and, you know, once you know better, you do better. How do you find out who it was? How did you see now you, you know, you ladies, y'all always want to know, well, who was it? Well, what did they do? Okay. Tell me the rest. I get it. He said his grandma was mean. His mother was. So I figured it out. Figured it was true. Oh, his mother was. Okay. So, yeah, it made sense that, um. Uh, when he said it was, he was going over his grandmama's house instead of his baby mama, that, okay, his mama is awful. So the grandma might be a, you know, lightweight hellion too. So, okay, it fits. But still, oh my God. And then, do you, do you feel, I know I asked you this before, but do you feel like, Tanya, like, when you think about that, like, that's a whole nother person? Like, that was your sister? Like, that wasn't even you? Can you even relate to being that person? Because I, I, I obviously now I can't see you being that way. I went into investigator mode to find out what was going on. Here's a million dollar question. When you found out, I'm sure you, you answered this on our other video. But when you found out what was going on, did you, um, did you leave him? When you found out, okay, you just one of your grandmoms, this was, uh, you know, your other female's house. Did you leave him when you found out? I don't remember, Reverend. I know you told me the, the whole timeline, but Reverend, I'm old. Okay. Did you leave him, preacher? Okay. All right. So Tanya just put a, a nice cliffhanger out there for us, and uh, I enjoyed that. I did for a month. Oh, okay. But then you came back. Okay. Well, you know. That's why that's what I'm saying, you know. I, I like I like dealing in the situations that really are extreme. Meaning what I mean by extreme. I like when 
you know, working with women who have done the things that most people would say is real stupid. Okay, there is no way you can work with Doc and stay the same. Yeah, I, I like the stuff that, you know, women say, oh, you know, I hear this a lot. I don't know if you ever heard a situation like mine. Yeah, I know you do. I, I want to hear them. You know, like, you, you, I'm sure you sure, you know, and this is a little embarrassed and whatnot. I'm just like, listen, trust me. I've heard a lot of stuff, seriously. So whatever you're going to tell me, it's not going to phase me. And that's not my concern anyway. My concern is helping you get where you want to be, not what you did. I mean, you could have done whatever you consider to be the most foul thing, whatever. I mean, that doesn't phase me. I don't look at you no different because um, I don't care about that. I care about you, period. Doc taught me to recognize BS right away by fixing myself. Well, God bless him. <laughs> then he made a big production of leaving her, drove back out there to get him, packed his car. And uh, like, oh, did he give me a practice car? Huh? I might have periscope dyslexia, so you might have to put that in there again. Um, yeah, y'all got some. I'm a sucker for a great story. I mean, that's what I do. I ask questions, I love stories. So, um, I just. And, you know, really all the stories are the same story at the end of the day. I mean, they're all not good, but what I'm saying is. It's, it's not really about what what happened. It's, I'm always about the why. That's all I care about. I don't, I don't care about the what. I care well, why why did it happen? Because once we resolve the why, it'll take care of the what. She was there when I picked him up saying I was dumb and they had sex the day before. It's a lot. The only thing that really blows my mind oftentimes, not going to say blows my mind, is when I think about the women, y'all having to deal, y'all tell me these situations and just I'm thinking like, oh my God, to deal with that would be crazy. Like how that just breaks a person down to absolutely nothing. You know, when I say nothing, it's like, I'm I'm giving you all I got and you just you don't you're crapping over it. You don't care. I'm giving you my heart. It's and you just <clears throat> I'm telling you ladies, y'all y'all give guys way too much credit. We're not that smart. We really aren't. Um we're very fragile. Um our game ain't as strong as we may lead you to think it is. It's really not. But what we count on is you just not knowing. We count on you not knowing and we count on you being very emotional. And we count on you being even what we may consider needy or thirsty. Um, it was on a long list of women treated that way. Found out there were many. So when a guy finds... A woman in that state who she's she's fearful to be alone and, you know, all that. Then he can easily play on that. Um, stalking, STD. Um, he can easily play on that. So he doesn't have to be that smart. Because how far are you coming to the situation, Doc Reed? Just pray for us to break up with a narcissist is not the same as a normal one. No, no, I get it. I, I, I get the whole hard breakup thing. Trust me. Trust me. Tell the truth, Doc. I, I get the whole hard breakup thing. But I and I, I wish I could make you feel it the you know the way about guys not being that that bright. Because once you really learn how men think, you learn who you are and all that, and you can't be manipulated anymore, then you see how fragile the guy is, how he's not all of that. He how 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 he's not as maybe as even as confident. You start to see the cracks in his armor. You know, because once you get healthy and you get whole and all that, you see his inconsistencies and his, you know, dysfunction. Do they ever change? Yes. Definitely can change. You see straight through that silence. Fools you. Mm -hmm. um, yes, guys definitely can change, ladies, just the same way that women can change. Um, true is hard. 
it took forever to break up, but Doc helped me make that final cut. Oh, listen to that. You finally gave an endorsement. God bless you. Um, so I need you to be a little quicker next. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, Reverend, you know I gotta mess with you. Um, but yeah, guys can change. I, I I do probably believe women you feel that a lot. You know, can can these bones live? Sure. I have my own crazy stories. I know how hard it can be. But a guy can change, ladies. But here's the thing. It's it's not about, really, it's not about a guy changing or a woman changing. Um, doesn't matter if they change. You got to worry about change. Right. It's really about just a person changing. Does that person want to change? And do they just want to change for them? Not, I don't want to change for you. I don't want to change for her. I don't want to change for them. Because if that person changes that they change for, then they may revert. But what if I change for me? What if I change because God says that I'm more than this, more than I'm living out? Okay, I'm better than this. All right, I'm not being true to who God really made me to be. So once you get, that's why when a person changes, make sure that they're changing for the right reasons. All right, and a lot of times guys will tell you they change and they ain't changed. You know, I know a situation right now that, you know, somebody is trying to get somebody back. You know, meaning that they, you know, young lady broke up with them and they're trying to get them back. So when a guy's trying to get you back, he's going to say any and everything. I wasn't dating before that happened, but I didn't start dating for a while after. Yeah, you kind of need a break, too. You know, a lot of times people don't take the break that they need. But keep in mind, a guy will say anything to get you back. And he's not even really thinking, do I mean it or not? He's just, I got to get her back. It's about the control. So even a narcissist, okay, he will say any and everything to get you back, okay, because he's got to get back in control of the situation. But that doesn't mean he's changed. So the magic question is, well, how do I know he's changed? Well, you won't know he's changed until you're in a situation, like I said before, when, you know, now for if he's a true narcissist, it's very easy criticizing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't look good. And thought it was quite ugly, actually. Um, you need to do something different. And <laughs> because, like I said, it's not that you're trying to be mean. I mean, it could be something that you really feel that way about. But you're going to find out real quick if that joker has changed, if he's a narcissist, because he cannot take being criticized because his fear of being humiliated is, is off the charts right off and on for eight years. Crazy. And here's another thing, too, ladies. I don't like the amount of time that y'all waste and give your your precious good years um, to crazy folk. Um, you you can let a lot of time go by, and um, and you know in a in a bad situation, you know. So if you're gonna be on the other side of the fence when you do that, uh, Amen, Doc. If you want. To draw a narcissist crazy, ignore and block and all block him. I actually had no interest in dating. His whole thing was the fact that I was a church girl and it I didn't know my worth. Yeah. Knowing your worth is a process. It it's it's a quite lengthy process. Um for some sitting down waiting sitting down waiting for so did I read that right? I really appreciate y'all coming out here when y'all do. Uh, I really do. I thank God for it. It breaks my heart to see so many of us beautiful women be hurt by a narcissist. Yeah, yeah. And the, the best thing that you can get is education. Okay? Because it's like the scripture talks about when you have light in, in darkness, you know, the darkness disappears. Okay? When the light shows up. So I liken that to getting you know, educated about men and relationships and yourself so that you can no longer be manipulated. Okay. Once you get free, I mean, like for real free, like not like pseudo free, but for real free, you know, it's not going down, sitting down, waiting for someone to change, shaking my head. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, listen, no father. Oh, um, I should have asked this when I was, uh, at 50 or whatever, but hey, I need some ideas. Give me some ideas um, for more topics next week. So I, I hope if you are dating a narcissist, um, you know now that you're dating a narcissist. 
I really thank you for doing this scope. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hey, I'm 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 a servant. I'm here to help y'all. So that's why I always ask. Give me the topics. Tell me what ambusher. Okay, yeah. I probably do need to revisit that. That's that's a good one. Some any other topics? Any other topics? Any other topics? Yeah, I'm here for y'all. Pseudo <laughs> pseudo cowboy. Yeah, someone reported my last comments as abuse. What? No, which ones? The devil. Reverend. Right, right. Okay. Well, I, it, I, I, you didn't say anything abusive, Reverend. So let's maybe somebody just mistakenly hit the wrong button. Maybe they meant to invite followers or something. I don't know. But I guess you kind of. Well, normally you get a little notification up that says, is this abusive? And I didn't see nothing pop up. Anywho, you know. So listen, I, I hope this is helpful. Like I said, if you're dating a narcissist, you dated a narcissist. Um, if you come across a narcissist, you'll know what a true blue narcissist is. Um, it's all about them. Uh, they cannot share the limelight. They expect you to do a bunch of crap for them. You're not going to get anything out of the deal. There's absolutely no empathy. They, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sorry. You never, I'm, you're not going to hear I'm sorry. Okay. Everything is about looks. Everything is definitely about per, um, perception, perfection, power, you know, prestige, dating someone for years, and he end up marrying someone else after one year. Yep, that's the classic. Why he marry her instead of you? But are you suggesting that for a topic? Or are you saying that happened to you? If her comments are abusive, what are mine? Yours, there is not even a category. Yeah, for yours, Tanya. You, you probably just, you're banned. They have no heart. Yeah, topic. Okay, you sent that as for a topic. Okay, cool. Yeah, that happens uh, quite a bit, actually. All right, ladies. Um, I am getting ready to go spend time with my amazing family that's just right on the other side of this door. And um, I'm going to eat whatever my wonderful wife has cooked. I'm trying to be healthier. Many of you don't know, but my diet is quite awful. I eat a lot of sweets. So I'm trying to do the right thing and be in God's will. And um, so y'all pray for me and, and hope that I can sustain this journey. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. And um, I'm going to try to do the right thing so I can you know, make sure I'm alert and where I need to be to help the women out. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Keish, Tanya, Kendra Spirit. What's up, uh, creative lady? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all holding me down tonight, sharing. Y'all shared some amazing stories. Please keep it coming. I love it. It's real. I don't want no fairy, you know, unicorns and, you know, I want the real stuff. Thanks for the scope. I want it as grimy. You, you know what I mean? I want the real deal. This is real deal, you know, because how else are you going to get help? You know, you may not have a lot of other outlets for it. You know, a lot of people don't feel comfortable. I mean, this is probably works. I can't see you. You can see me. So we're all in uncut stories. I enjoy it. See, I should do a podcast radio show. It's got to come. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Hey, bro, what happens when your wife is a narcissist? It's all the same stuff. It all applies. That's a good question. Yes, podcasts, podcasts are big right now. But real quick, if your wife's a narcissist, it's the same thing. I mean, she's totally 100% consumed with herself. Now, it's, if she's a true blue narcissist, I don't know if you've been on, watched the whole scope and I gave the all the characteristics of a narcissist, but if she fits that uh, criteria, then um, whew, your wife, yeah. Um, if you're married to a narcissist, counseling, you, you got to do some counseling. Like, and, and, and now you can tell... If if a narcissist, because the narcissist really wouldn't want to get counseling because they don't want to shine the light on the fact that they might be the problem. So that may be a litmus test. You know, if you suggest counseling and they don't want to do it. Um, and you, you, here's the thing. You can't be in a relationship by yourself. It, it takes, you know, now where you go at that point when a person 
is basically telling you, I'm not going to change. This is who I am. It is what it is. Um, it's not healthy for our relationship. You have to make that decision. Are you happily married? One told me they don't believe in counseling. Well, you know what? You're an idiot. I shouldn't say that. That probably wasn't politically correct. Um, but you're not a very wise person to not believe, <laughs> to not believe in getting help. My ex had counseling and he flipped the issues on me. Well, see, a lot of times you'll get, you know, people going to counseling. So you got to have a good counselor too. That's important because if you have a doormat counselor, then they'll let somebody with a stronger personality dominate the counseling session. So you got to make sure that you got something. It was a cop out. He didn't want to get exposed, of course. Yeah, you, you, you know, so you just got to you got to make sure you have a counselor who tells it like it is. Like I said, because if you have a manipulator or somebody with a very strong personality, they could intimidate or, you know, kind of talk circles around the, the counselor. So it happens. But, yeah, if you if you're married to a, a narcissist and they don't want to get help, you, you got some real decisions that you got to make uh, a lot of prayer. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, you do. it's your decision on what you do from there. But I can tell you one thing, the relationship's not going to get better. Um, yes, yeah, see, they can say that. Um, some counselors need counseling. Um, yes, get out. But yeah, no response. He was here for a short while. He may still be here. Maybe he just wanted to put that question out there so that, you know, it wasn't so one-sided with the men, you know, that them being narcissists say, what's the deal with the ladies? In case they are narcissists. But st statistically, yeah, um, more men are narcissistic than women. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the way it is. So, yeah, but all right. Ladies, okay, I appreciate y'all. I'm out of here. Take care.